quick run through of a poker hand probability example. So this is a standard five card hand. Uh, so there's lots of interesting variations with poker that make the probabilities much more interesting. But this is just dealing five cards, no drawing, no picking from seven or anything like that, and the probability of getting a full house on a straight five card deal. It was called five card stud. Okay. So first, of course, is we would like to figure out how many outcomes are there in the sample space. And to do that, and really dominates uh, most probability problems when you're doing anything with counting, any probability with counting, is always ask the two fundamental questions. Are you counting with order? Oh, and really, you should talk, ask about replacement first. It's really better to ask about replacement, because that influences whether you should use order or not. When you uh, deal cards from a deck, and somebody has all five of their cards in their hand at the same time, it's without replacement. Okay. Because of that, you cannot get doubles and triples. You can't get like two ace of spades, so exactly the same thing. And it's doubles and triples that mess up an attempt to count without order. So it's at least plausible to count without order. If you're doing with replacement, never ever do a probability problem counting without order. You'll have to use order. But because it's without replacement, we could use it as long as the order doesn't matter to us, as long as you don't win or lose the game, depending on how they come to you in the deal. Now, with other poker games, it might be quite important. Uh, the game might go rather differently, depending on how they come to you. But if you get them all in one, one deal, then it's going to be okay. And so we're going to do without, we're going to count it without order. And that does tend to make things simpler, uh, as we'll see. Okay, so that means uh, we've got 52 cards, just one uniform pool. We're choosing five of those without replacement, without order. That is a standard counting problem, 52C5, okay, uh, which is uh, 2,598,999. Okay, so now we want to calculate how many ways can you get a full house. Now, a full house is a triple, a three of a kind, and a two of a kind of obviously some different kind of card. Okay, so the principles here are grouping and stages and, and um, sort of staged calculation of making choices in a way that uh, that suits the problem okay in particular don't try to do poker hand calculations by saying what's the first card what's the second card what's the third card first of all we're trying to count it without order and so that's going to be very misleading second of all that's not respecting the fact that there's suits and values and that there's a triple and a double here. Um, if you try to say, oh, what's the card here? Depending on what you pick here, that's going to affect your later choices. And depending on whether this the first three is a triple or the first three is not a triple, that's going to affect. It's just, it, it's horrible. It's just not a good way to do it. Okay, so what we do is we look at, a nice way to organize it, this way I do it in, in my probability notes, is there's really four choices to be made. The value of the triple, the value of the pair, and the suit for the triple and the pair. And for each of those, let's see, um, no matter what the value is for the triple, I can have whatever value for the pair, the only thing is it has to be something different. So they affect each other, but in a very systematic way. Uh, whatever the value is, whatever the suits, the choice of suits are for the triple, that should be really totally independent of the suits for the pair. So we're going to be able to fill in numbers here and use our fundamental counting principle which is that we've made a choice here, a choice here, a choice here, a choice here, and we're going to multiply. Um, and so we're really looking at the functional grouping based on the idea that we're counting, not just like it's five cards randomly. Um, and we're, we're looking at these grouping into the triple and the pair. So, uh, and hopefully when you've got something like this, each of the boxes to fill in hopefully will be a standard counting problem. And it's this idea of reducing a more complicated counting problem to a combination of standard counting problems either put together with multiplication, because you're doing ands, or sometimes addition, because you're doing cases and or. Okay, so the the triple, uh, the values for the triple, well, that's 13 possibilities, okay? Could, it could be anything from uh, two up through eights. The value for the pair, well, it can't be the same thing once I've chosen the triple, but it can be anything else. So that's going to be 12, okay? Then the suit for the triple, okay, I've got four suits, um, that I could choose, and I've got to choose three, and order doesn't matter. Um, from the very start, as soon as I did this, in fact, 
I confirmed, okay, I'm going to count this without order. Um, and that's for C3, which is really simple. That's just four. Okay, it's really the same as counting the suit I don't have. And then this is for C2, which is six, because I'm going to be counting, I'm looking at the pair, say it's a pair of threes, um, I could have maybe a club and a diamond, but I could have any other uh, two out of the, that's a two by the way, I could have any other two out of the four suits. Okay, so the product of all those turns out to be 3744. Then divide by the 52, whoops, that's kind of a big 52, it's going to be a weird left-handed soup subscript. Okay, turns out to be about pretty small, 0.144%. Can you see that? Yeah. Uh, let me put it over here. And it's, if you want it as a, a ratio, about 1 out of 694. So you'll see that about 1 out of every seven ha 700 hands on average. Not something that you'd certainly never see um, if you're a regular poker player. Um, and, of course, lots of poker games, uh, you get to choose the best 5 out of 7, or you get to put in cards and draw cards back. You're going to see a lot more full houses than 1 out of every 700, because those all serve to inflate the odds of getting a good hand. All right, and then I'll do another video with a more complicated problem as well.